quite as um, possessive of their personal space as we are today. So, you know, if it's shelter from the storm, you, you get in there. That they'd be warmer that way, huh? Yeah. Now, of course, the, and this is the corporals, the officers are going to be in larger tents, which is partially, partially their status. Part of that is the fact they have to have room to do the paperwork they have to do. Let's step over to this area, speaking of paperwork. There's an important office. Now you notice this oh, is um, this is strictly an office. There's no bedding in here. That's because this is where a lot of the secretarial duties are going to be taken care of. Um, have you ever kept a journal, no, diary, or anything like that? This is basically the diary for the army. The officer who's going to be here is called the adjutant. He is going to keep track of any orders that come from General Washington. He's going to keep track of any orders that are pertaining just to his regiment. Records of courts martial. They'll even have lost and found recorded in here, as well as duty rosters. So this is going to be an important record of what's going on in that particular Now, he's also going to be a communications officer, so one of the things he'll have to do is make sure that he's constantly got this tent manned. Not only with, if he's not here, with, with another officer of the day, but also with a drummer. That's why the drum is back there. That's very important for communication in this time period. So there'll be drummer posted here 24 hours as well. This is in the center of the camp. It's up in the front where the men are. So if they need to be made aware of any duty changes or, you know, get their attention for something else, you know, the drum's going to do it. Now. Again, no bedding here because it is strictly office. Now, the next tent back is an officer's tent. You'll notice there will be bedding in that. That's going to be for the captain. They'll switch them out. They'll take it because usually what happens is every company has a drummer and a fifer. They're able to switch those guys out, take turns. He's going to be assisted by two junior officers called subalterns. Subalterns would be lieutenants and ensigns. So they're going to be below him as a captain. Ideally, the captain has a tent all to himself. There'll be another tent just like this next to him that is going to be for his junior officer. But sometimes, because of shortages of tents, you got to share. Now, you notice there's a little bit of difference here in the bedding. Because they're not going to be sleeping on straw like the enlisted men. But you do have one cot, and then we've got a straw stuffed mattress. A lot of that depended on what the officer could afford. Keep in mind, the enlisted men are issued everything that they need, or what they're supposed to get, I should say, by the Army. The officers pay for it all. It's out of pocket. Which means, of course, you have to be from the well-to-do class if you're going to be an officer. Now, there's something that goes along very much with that. You know, it's not just because they're rich they get all the nice stuff. They've had an education which means they can read and write, which means they can do this job. You know, the average person back then wouldn't necessarily have that ability. If you were an enlisted man and you could read and write, you might make it to sergeant, but unless you're well-to-do, you're probably not going to make it much beyond that. So officers generally from the property class. Now, his responsibility and his other officers make sure these guys know their job. But he's also supposed to take care of them and look after their health. Now, the person who's most critical in that respect is the surgeon. Step over here and talk a little bit about some of the challenges that they face. Come on, come on in around here. Now, this is not a hospital. This is the surgeon's quarters. There would be no benches, there would be no fly. This stuff would probably be at a field hospital a good 100 yards away from here. You don't want to operate in camp, that's bad for morale. And also, you want to keep the sick away from the well. So, those things are going to happen further away from here. The uh, main thing he deals with surgically, of course, is bullet wounds. Now, an ounce of lead is going to do a lot of damage. If that hits at close ranges, it may necessitate the removal of a limb. They will certainly amputate, but that's not an automatic association with the surgeon. The term sawbones doesn't exist yet, that's later. <laughs> Um, most of the time what he's trying to do is find these and get them out. Now these leave a hole but you don't know exactly where they're gone so you've got to find them. Well you don't have x-rays. 